Hi, and welcome back for the solution to exercise number seven, where we get into what happens when applications have been obfuscated and the developer is trying to hide what it's doing. So our goal of this exercise is, while there can be a lot of different types of obfuscation that Android apps use, one of the most basic is obfuscating strings. Um, so that you can't just use those strings to search for API calls, to um, search for, you know, debugging information to help you understand it. It's one of those basic things that any sort of app developer can do to cover their tracks and make it that much more difficult to understand the Android app. So we're going to practice that today um, using specifically static reversing techniques to figure out what the string says in plain text. Um, Whereas, as I talked about in the workshop, there's a lot of cases where when dealing with obfuscation, you probably want to deal with um, dynamically analyzing the app and techniques such as that. But since this workshop is static focused, um, we're going to stick and use those techniques today. Um, oh, and just to start, some of the reasons why um, you may need to use static um, and not just because this workshop is talking about static, is that um, oftentimes, along with obfuscation, the apps might be using cloaking techniques um, where they're trying to detect if they're being analyzed. And so even if you do try and set it up and run it, um, it might not run effectively. So you can't have the whole thing de-obfuscated or it's, the app is supposed to run on a device that you don't have so you can't actually run it or instrument it. So there's a lot of different reasons why you may need to statically deobfuscate it. So back to our starting points. First, we need to find a string that we need to deobfuscate. In this exercise, this will be a little more hand wavy than in some of the exercise we did because I really want us to focus and the takeaway for this exercise should be focusing on how to deobfuscate, when you come across strings that are obfuscated and you need to know them for your, what you're trying to answer the question, your context, etc. cetera. Um, so there will be a myriad of different ways you could have gotten to this string. Maybe you ran strings on it. Maybe you were just um, following code execution of the work of the application and came across this and needed to know. Um, so that's the first step though, is we need to find the string to um, deobfuscate and I had put in exercise context it is a JavaScript string so that should help us get to the point here too because um, it is interesting if you see a whole bunch of gobbledygook being passed to loading in JavaScript that seems kind of weird. Um, the next is we want to then identify the routine that is deobfuscating the string because obviously the application can't load jumbled string as JavaScript. It's not legitimate JavaScript. So at some point it has to be that plain text. So that means that we should be able to do the same thing the app does to get it to that plain text. Um, next, we need to figure out in this context, what makes the, what's the right type of solutions to write to deobfuscate this? And this is gonna be, could be different for each person, depending on your comfort level, how quickly you are with different languages, um, what type of test bed or instrumentation you already have set up, whether you have a lot of these apps that are similar and related, so you're going to want to run this deobfuscation script at scale over a lot of them, or whether it's just the single one. So there's a lot of considerations you can take into account. And some of the video reference videos I have linked in the workshop talks through my thought process on the decisions I make when writing the obfuscation solutions for a couple of different Android botnets that I analyze. So check out those links if you're interested in some of the decision-making process. And lastly, we're going to do it. We need to deobfuscate it. So let's get started. We're going to open up the app in GX once again. So let's go to our samples directory. The sample for this um, exercise is clashoflights.apk. JDEX. And Clash of Lights. And just like any other time, again, this is the first sort of hand wavy part where we need to find the app. So if 
since the point and the takeaway I want you to have from this application is the practice doing deobfuscation. Um, if you want to jump straight to finding the JavaScript string you need to deobfuscate, uh, you know, I totally understand that too. But let's say you were sort of going through some of the motions. The way I actually came across this string in practice was this app had been flagged that it needed to have manual review and there weren't a lot of indicators of what was going on. So what I did is I just decided to start at the starting point um, of what is the entry class um, and the entry classes that are started whenever you know the user clicks the icon and that's going to be whichever activity has the main and the launcher. Um, uh, action and category on it and so it's this activity which is uh, com.supercell.clashofclansgameapp so let's take a look at that um, supercell clashofclansgameapp so it's a super small class and in its constructor it immediately just calls um, it's super class, which here is not yet the activity class because we know all activities, which this is, is going to um, subclass activities. So there's actually another one. So this is where I would now go ahead and open up this one to see if it looks any more interesting. Um, so we go com titan or supercell titan uh, game app. And this has a lot more going on. Here. And so this one does extend activity. And so we start to see off the bat that it has an interface, it has a subclass here, and then it has a couple different constructors. And so it's not scientific, but you know, sometimes just scrolling through the class to get a feel for what you're looking at, what all is intended. Here we do suddenly see a lot of web views, which are interesting. Um, and this is actually where our jumbled string is because it stands out that it says it's car set text and it is being passed to the load data um, API for the web view, which you can look up, um, which says, you know, hey, load this in the web view. And so that's weird that it is all gumbled, but let's keep going through. And so, you know, that's something that stands out of sometimes just scrolling to get a feel for what isn't contained in a class and what code it contains. And you will continue to grow that pattern matching skill of what's interesting and stands out versus what's pretty normal and likely benign the more apps you look at. So in general, like I said, we'll come back and deobfuscate it, but that's definitely the most interesting of a web view loading a obfuscated string. So now we need to figure out what are our deobfuscation routines. And so the way you think about this is load data clearly has to have, be past the pain, the plain text screen, string, not screen, at some point. And we see that the jumble screen is passed to three different functions here. One, as of yet unidentified, but custom to this package. The second, which is not interesting, is where it translates, it creates a string object out of it. And the last one is another unknown. So let's start with the closest to the jumbled string um, and see where that leads us. Because th these, this whole series of functions are ultimately going to have to deobfuscate this string since they have to return a plain text one to be um, passed to load data. So if we go first to z1.a, Okay, and now it's finished decompiling, indexing, and loading. So here um, are the two different places that 
the string is the obfuscated, or this function is called, and here is the definition. So let's head to the definition. And here we actually have the two different places that are, um, or the two different functions that we saw are called on our obfuscated string. So the first thing to um, start with is one, we now have the code. We have everything we need to um, change that gobbly gook <laughs> obfuscated string into the plain text to know what is this app loading, um, which is probably at least semi-interesting since they went to the trouble of writing these obfuscation strings to hide what it is. And so now we just need to write a piece of code that does this exact same thing on the string. And so we need to make our decisions of how do we want to do that? And there's a couple of different ways you can take it to account. Uh, one of the biggest ones is, are there a lot of strings you need to run this code on in a lot of apps, or is there only one? So as we saw when we looked at the usage for this function, There's, it's actually only used in two different places, meaning it's and it's deobfuscating the same string both times. So what that means is we have a lot more options for our solution because we don't need it to scale. We don't need it to say automatically find all the strings that this function is run on in the application and then apply it on there. There's not a lot of decision making. So my go-to in a lot of cases is Python because I'm comfortable with Python. I almost always have it um, installed and it can usually do what I want. But another option that tends to be super easy is you have Java decompiled code here. So you can also just fix this up, make it a little prettier and run the Java code on your solution. Um, you can often copy and paste and then put it in a uh, and then just run it and you know that's a really straightforward and quick way because remember as of now we don't necessarily need to know and be able to explain in depth how this algorithm for deobfuscation works we want the deobfuscated contents right now we're trying to figure out what is this loading in that web view so what i did in this case and i'll show you the example here is i literally transliter basically transliterated this Java into Python. Um, it could have been just as fast and maybe faster if I had just um, copy and pasted it into a new Java um, file and ran it. Not really sure why it didn't, you know, it's either way, neither here or there. So what I mean by transliterate is that first, we're only running this on one string, so we don't need to add a lot of extra. And so then I'm just going to take each line of the Java code and write it in Python. So um, what we see here is we have a for loop. So I'm going to write the same for loop that is um, going to go through. And what it's doing is it's getting two characters from our obfuscated string and then translating them to their hexadecimal um, numeric value. Um, and that's why we see these divided by two because one byte equals two characters. Um, and so when I transliterate that into Python, um, I just do a while loop and uh, use Python's APIs that allow you to translate a character into its hexadecimal value. So that's this first function here. And so my function a equals this first block in this Python script. And then the second section, it's setting keys that is then doing a basic XOR over the new bytes that we have from doing the uh, basically character to hex conversion um, and so we exit for that. Um, so a pretty simple obfuscation algorithm that you can code up again 
again, it probably actually would have been faster for me to just take a look at this and put it in Java, but this is what it would look like in Python. And then um, as long as you have Python installed, so let me save this. Let's save this. Um, we save that in our home directory, and then we just have to go home, Python, D, clash. And so the first printout is where I change the character representation to their numeric value. And then the second is the deobfuscated string. So what we see is they're loading a JavaScript source where they're downloading the script from um, CoinHive website. Um, and then they are setting basically the key and starting the uh, CoinHive miner. Um, so yeah, they're mining Bitcoin in an app, which probably is not very cost effective, but to each their own. So here's an example. Um, pretty straightforward of how to deobfuscate strings when you come across them in applications. And basically what I want to remind you of is that at some point the app and the computer have to know the deobfuscated um, code and contents. Therefore, you can always find it too. It's just making that decision of whether or not it's worth the investment from your side to answer that question. Um, so with that, Congratulations, you've deobfuscated it. Um, hopefully you also tried it in some methods your own way. Maybe not just my same Python script. Uh, yeah.